Hi everyone, welcome to Being Youthful. I am Kim Beegler, owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I'm here, I'm at the mill, I'm by myself. Welcome back if you are coming back. If you're new, I'm gonna talk a lot about wool. <laughs> There'll be a lot of wool talk in here and some knitting and hand spinning and all of those things. So welcome and please don't forget to subscribe, to comment, to like, set alarms so you know when I have a new episode coming out. If you're listening, do all those things as well um, because all the apps like to know that you're there. So um, welcome. I have a heavy, last time we did heavy knitting, this is heavy wool and hand spinning for sure. I have a bunch of stuff that I wanted to show you all and I just keep getting, it keeps getting pushed off. So here we are. First, I wanna start with a fun, fun story about waking up the other morning. <laughs> And I was sleeping so soundly and we have our small dogs sleep in the house with us, Velma and Nigel, you probably have seen them throughout. Velma is about 15 pounds. She's a little dachshund cross. She is the queen of the farm. She does everything bad. She does everything wrong. And by bad, I mean like she climbs under the fences are not meant for her. Listening is not meant for her, all the things. And she's like 12, so she's not a spring chicken at this point. Uh, but she was meant to be a farm dog, I will tell you that. Anyway, the other morning, she usually sleeps tucked in right by me, and she jumped off the bed, 5.30 or so, and I was like, well, that's weird, where is she going? But you know, I'm kind of asleep, not paying attention. Then, you know, I don't know, I assume it was only a minute or so later, She's back on the bed and she jumps right up next to my head. And I'm like, what is going on, girl? And I kind of, you know, I'm asleep. So I kind of catch, I kind of take a quick peek and I'm like, is there something in her mouth? And this second that thought registered, plop. I'm not kidding, plop, probably three inches from my head, a dead mouse. And I screamed like nobody's business in high pitched, Scree screaming, squealing, sitting up. Oh my gosh, there's a dead mouse. <laughs> and Mitch was asleep, just like, what in the world are you talking about? And he can't see that well when he doesn't have his glasses on. So he said he looked over and he's like, well, I saw there was something there, but there was no way it was a dead mouse. Mm, it was a dead mouse. So um, everybody fled the bed. Like it was like a free for all of jumping off the bed. And one of the cats walked by and I can tell you that those cats are the ones that got the mouse. And then I, Velma at some point decided to put an end to it and, and she grabbed the mouse. So that was my, uh, I think that was Sunday morning. I woke up to that, that was pretty funny. I did go back to sleep, but I had to lay a towel over the spot. <laughs> Even though it was very clean, there was no remnants of mouse. Anyway. Hashtag farm life, that can happen anywhere. That can happen anywhere, but but it seems to happen to us a little bit more maybe. Um, okay, so after that fun, uh, some news at the mill. And I do have a bunch of mill videos in this one, a fair amount. Um, I have plenty of fiber to show. And I was gonna talk a little about chain plying because I've kind of been talking about that in all different places, except for here, I think. So, um, some big news at the mill, and somebody caught this in the last episode, so I thought I would respond, and I kind of debated whether to respond to, 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 to tell everybody or just to like let, let this fizzle out. Anyway, so I actually sold my spinning equipment here at the mill. So what does that mean, Kim? Um, basically what it means is I will no longer be making yarn at the mill. Um, I'm still, I'm not retiring from this. I love milling. I love, love, love milling. Uh, but the reality was that it was too much for me to try to do everything by myself. And I made the conscious choice not to bring staff in because, uh, it just doesn't fit into our lifestyle. I used to have a business where I had a large staff. I just, I don't want to manage staff again. I don't want to find staff. I don't want to train staff. It's all these things coming up with the systems to make it safe and make it work. It's just beyond the time I have to invest at this point. And I really, really love doing the work myself. So, um, so I've made that choice. The reality is though, trying to do all of these things, I can't mill for everybody. So, um, and I didn't, when I first bought the mill, I didn't actually buy the spinning equipment. I bought through the carter, um, and that's where I was gonna stop. 
And then kind of last minute, we went back in and I applied for a second loan to get that spinning equipment. So here I am, I think it's been six years and I'm like, I, I love making yarn, but I don't love making yarn. And the dust was building up on the spinning machine. And it finally got to where I decided this is silly because I know there is a huge demand for this equipment. Um, Mini Mills, who I get my equipment from, is backed up by years. There's just not a lot of mill equipment to get your hands on. And I have some sitting here collecting dust. And it's collecting dust for a reason. It's because I don't feel like doing it. So, um, and it takes a long time to make yarn. It takes a long time to make yarn. So the part that I love and the part that I think lots of you have found me for is for my fibers, for hand spinning, for teaching, which has become such a passion over the last year or two. Thank you to all of you who watch here on YouTube because I don't think I would have realized how much I love teaching if it hadn't been for me starting this channel and then starting to teach little snippets here and there and share what I know. So. That is what's going on in the mill. I am still gonna be milling like crazy. I'm just focusing on hand spinning fibers, not just, it still is a process. It's still a huge process, but um, this is where my passion is, it turns out, and we've gotten here the long way, a big circular route. Um, I will, in the mill shop, still be carrying, and some of it will make its way online, will be carrying other US locally milled yarns for sale. So. Um, some of it will make its way into the online shop. It just depends where that mill is at, whether they want me to list it online or if they just want it sold in store. Everybody has their different reasons for doing it each way. So um, anyway, those will make their way. But if you're coming into the mill shop to sit, to make, to shop, I want to have yarn and I want to be able to support other mill owners in their journey. Um, in yarn making so and i was just watching literally i put youtube on my tv here at work so i was carding and i was watching dinny and dinny has my imperfect knitting life she's over in new zealand i'm pretty sure her and i have messaged uh, throughout the last year as she's getting her mill up and running and i was watching her latest episode and i was like girl i have been there to all the places she was talking about the frustrations and not getting the equipment to run the right way to and i've messaged with her about it there's only i can't help her as much because she has very different equipment than me but i can most certainly give her some tips on some of the things that are universal and also the journey <laughs> i think there is a universal journey that a lot of mill takers mill owners go through and she was talking about the tears flowing and what in the world was i thinking and i have been there sometimes i'm still there um anyway denny if you're watching which i know you do sometimes i am with you and i have been there and just keep going keep going um, and for me, part of that journey has been this full circle thing where I dove deeper into hand spinning than I ever thought. No, I don't know. But anyway, that's the long and short of it. So the spinner is leaving, it is moving to Kentucky to somebody who already has a mill, already is spinning and is trying to increase their production. And um, I'm so, she's so excited and I'm so excited that it's going to go to a good home where it's not going to collect dust. So um, I still have a few pieces that will go up for sale that are um, part of the spinning process. So, um, but I'll be carding like crazy. Um, so there's the big news at the mill and it takes a big weight off of my shoulders to not have to think about it anymore. So um, there's, okay, um, onward. Some things to show you. Okay, this is really exciting. So in my Patreon, speaking of, Jessica is one of my patrons on there and we have a monthly Zoom and this is why it's so fun and also just a tinge dangerous to be in all these communities, right? So Jessica, we were just talking about what are you all working on? And we were all kind of going around talking and she showed this most magnificent drop spindle and I could not not. So here is mine. I ordered it. It is a, a woman in Canada, I believe she's in Canada. Um, and she is making this. Okay. First off, these colors are a lot. They're just amazing. So you may notice this little black band here. So there is, I'm gonna show you what that's about. It's in here somewhere. What? She made a drop spindle with bobbins. So the bobbins slide off, you can spin, bobbin slides off, fill in the next bobbin, and then you can 
you know, you can just ply off of two bobbins. So when I'm drop spinning, like half the time what happens is I'm like, this one's full or I need to get on with the second half so I can make a two ply yarn. And so I end up pulling the fiber off and I find a knitting needle or a pencil, whatever is around literally, and I slide it on there and then I go working on it. But how amazing is this? And you can fit, I mean, this will fit on almost any um, uh, Lazy Kate. Because look at, isn't that amazing? Super cute. And Jessica was like, it spins really well and it does. So I will share with you the other thing she sent along with it was this beautiful little bat. And I think maybe it was a half ounce or an ounce. Um, and it's just a white, but it's like right up my alley. It's just wooly, wooly, wool. And then she threw some color in and I've had so much fun. I had to stop myself because I wanted to show you the bat so simple and fun and there's some vegetable matter in it there's all the things that i love um and you can see how it's spinning up i really just shoved that at you so i love this um of course i didn't bring her card with me i believe it's anoxia i will put it here and then i'll put it in the show notes as well so you can link to it she's also currently in the process of creating i know her shop was down till the 25th but then she was coming back um she's also making a little lazy kate that fits these bobbins now of course you could use but if you don't have a lazy kate and you don't have a drop spindle then these are all great things so um and it's adorable this is the summer June, I think it was her June summer collection one or something, but the colors, and I believe she has it in different weights and she sends you it. Anyway, it's great. I will put all the links in the show notes. So that's been really fun. I've been having fun drops filling on that. And now that I have shown you all, I can finish the bat. The bat was also fun because it's always fun for me to, to have fun with somebody else's fiber and then help it inspire me like, oh yes, this is fun. The other thing that it did for me, it, because it makes, it gets me thinking about things that I wanna create for you all. And then the other thing it made me think of was, well, a lot of times when you're drop swindling, you don't necessarily need a ton of fiber or want a ton of fiber. Um, now, of course you could drop anyway. So I think I'm going to start, instead of where I would have four ounce bumps and then you know i would have some that were six i'm going to start breaking some of that up so that there's some smaller amounts maybe it comes in a two ounce amount and that also it's nice for drop spindlers if you don't want a huge amount it's also nice for budgeting if you just want to try something but you don't want a full four ounces i'm going to have it in smaller amounts so anyway that is my new fun fun toy and i'm very i was so excited when it came in the mail and jessica thank you for sharing because I was all in. Um, okay, what's next? I wanted to show you really quickly some of the stuff I got at Black Sheep Gathering. I didn't get a lot, but I got a few things and it, they were worth sharing. So um, I got a mug, which I didn't bring, but I will try to put a picture of it here so that I remember. And this is not even, I haven't even opened this box up, but one of the things I got was this. It's Pima Cotton and Wool in roving so let me see if i get the box open here to show you it looks beautiful in the box so i'm just going to show you that so it's a cotton and wool this is from mendo wool i haven't broken into it yet but i'm excited somebody was here at the mill day and she had gotten some too and she was spinning it and she said you know it takes a second to get into but um i'm excited to spin that it really is lovely and this is from mendocino uh wool and fiber they're down in california and um really fun i'm excited about that and it's so pretty look how pretty they keep so i'm excited to try that and i actually am signed up for a spinning cotton class. So at Oregon Flock and Fiber is a festival here in Albany at the end of September, I believe. And a friend of mine, Wendy, who is a spinner, has been wanting to spin um, like this cotton that is in Hawaii. It's very short. Cotton is very, very short staple length. So it takes some extra maneuvering and skills and techniques uh, to make it a little easier. So she wanted to sign up for it. And I don't know, wild hair. I decided to sign up for it too. The more I learn, the more I can also pass on to all of you in all of the places. So I'm excited for that. So this will, um, I'm excited for that. I'm a little, you know, I'm excited because it'll be fun. 
and we're taking it together. So that will be fun. Fiber with friends, right? Um, or we're like, we'll both be like, oh my gosh, get us out of here. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so that is at Oregon Flock and Fiber in the September. I actually am also signed up for, and it will explain this late, this next purchase I got. I signed up for Lambtown is a festival down in Dixon, California. I've never been before. I think it's pretty ag, it's fiber, but it's pretty, it's more on the ag side. Um, and so I signed up, they have great classes. They still have great classes. Some of them I know have filled up, some of them haven't. So, but I signed up for a class with Jillian Moreno and Jillian Moreno wrote the book Yarn Architecture. She um, is a hand spinning teacher and she wrote a book and she does, she works a lot with wool top and dyed wool top. She's kind of the queen of dyed wool top colors and spinning and designing your own yarn using that fiber. So I am not, as most of you know, a big wool top spinning person. That said, look at my next purchase and what I did. Two things. One, when I was signing up for classes, I've never been to Lambtown, but I grew up in Sacramento. Great excuse to go see my friends and go to this festival. So I was like, oh, I don't want to take an all day class because that's going to just like, ugh, it's just going to be long. I have a hard time sitting that long. So what did I do? I signed up for an all day class with Jillian Moreno, but I really wanted to take a class with her all spinning wool top and um i'm excited that i got in i think the class is full i'm guessing all her classes are full now one of them was full before i even got on there so i'm taking this all day spinning top i if anyone can convince me and inspire me and get me excited about spinning top it's gonna be her i'm convinced so um i'm excited to take the class and i'm excited to take a class with her and it was part of my inspiration in buying this beauty so these colors make me very happy um this is from greenwood they are out of i'm thinking colorado but i could be very wrong i'll put all of it in the show notes um this is a merino yak and silk so i kind of mixed it up by getting a fiber that i wouldn't necessarily be spinning otherwise with the yak and the silk in it but her dyeing is beautiful and when i look at wool tops i am really looking to make sure that there's not a lot of felting that happened i don't like i i just i don't have the patience to work with the wool top a lot so um her dyeing is beautiful the top looks like it's in wonderful condition i'm excited to spin it i might actually dive into it before the course uh lamb town by the way is i think it's the first weekend in october so i'll be in a lot of classes um so i've got this class and then i signed up for another all day class you all i was unstoppable mitch was laughing at me so i signed up for an indigo dyeing class with i cannot remember her name simone i think she owns sincere sheep she's down in colorado sincere sheep she has yarns that are she focuses on kind of more breed specific 100 percent wool non-superwash she's teaching an indigo dyeing class all day <laughs> so there i am thursday and friday i will be down in dixon california and then i'm going to spend some of the weekend with my friends that are in sacramento too so I will be, my head will be exploding with all the information and new, but anytime you take a class of any form, you learn something, right? Even if it's something you had no concept or doesn't pertain, well, obviously I'm going to learn a lot in the indigo dyeing. And I know I will learn from Jillian. So I'm excited. I tried to get into a third class. It was only a half day, but I'm on the waiting list. So we'll see. That was a pelt, um, felting live pelts. So like a lot of times, <laughs> I will run into um, fleeces that are a little bit felted already when I'm out doing wool buys. And so this would be a great way to utilize some of those. Um, but it was full by the time I decided to actually sign up. So we'll see. If I get in, I get in. If I don't, totally fine. Because I would like to have Saturday to wander around a bit. Um, a bit. And yes, I'm wearing the same top as the last episode. And I did it on purpose, you all, because... I didn't feel like she got enough glory. She didn't get enough. And also, when you make something, man, wear it. Wear it all the time and tell everybody you made it. 
<laughs> That's how I feel. Somebody came into the mill shop, Brittany, if you're watching, she came in and a couple years ago, she, and she only, I think started spinning in 2020. I think she said she bought a couple years ago. She bought a washed Jacob fleece that I had for sale. So it was, uh, washed, but not carded or anything. She bought the fleece. And I, you know, that's as far lots of times as things go when I'm selling stuff. I don't ever know what becomes of it, right? So she came into mill day and she was spinning and she said, oh, I bought this fleece from you a long time ago. This is what I did with it. Oh my gosh. It was so epic. To me, as a hand spinner, exceptionally epic because she separated the colors out. She made this beautiful, I think it was an Andrea Mowry sweater. It is stunning. And it's, and she did, she separated the colors out in the Jacob fleece. She hand spun it, she knit it, stunning. And I was like, Brittany, I basically, if I was like buying coffee, not wearing the sweater, I would still be showing people the pictures that were the baristas that were serving me. I'd be like, do you want to see this thing I made? Oh my gosh. It was really stunning. It was so impressive, Brittany. Still, I can't get over how impressed it was, how impressed I was with all of the effort you put in and, and that you finished it and everything. So exciting. So anyway, I was like, you know what? I'm wearing it again. I'm wearing it again. And I do love it. And I should say, I, um, I use Sistari yarn. We have Sistari cotton. They are Virginia grown. It's Virginia grown cotton and it's milled in Virginia, dyed in Virginia. They are a mill in Virginia, obviously. Um, I, sh the only thing I did different was I shortened the sleeves a little bit. I think she has the sleeves a little bit longer. Um, so I just didn't knit. I think I only knit like an inch from the um, underarm. And I debated not doing any extra sleeve, but I'm glad I did. I like it with the sleeve. I like the top as a whole. I'll stand up for you so you can see it a little bit better. Um, it's really nice. It's a, a heavier weight cotton, so it's definitely not um, something I'm gonna wear when it's really warm, but throughout most of the summer here in Oregon, I can wear it, so. And anyway, so I wore it on purpose again. Um, okay, chain flying. Let's talk quick about, is that all I wanted to show you? I think that's all I wanted to show you from, I didn't buy a ton, um, but I'm happy with what I bought. So, uh, okay. I, chain flying and then we'll talk quickly what I've been working on in the mill and then we're out um and then we're out okay so chain flying I just wanted to show you because I showed this on every other platform I think except for here so this is some wool top oddly enough that I spun short forward also oddly enough so very different for me and you can see I did it two bobbins, right? So I spun the same thing. It had different color blocks. I spun it and then plied it together. Obviously the color blocks were not even. So the colors come out. <coughs> oh, there's wool flying. So the colors come out overlapping each other. I did a little sample and this is what it looks like when I chain plied it. So you can see that the color blocks really stay together there in the yarn as opposed to when they're held up, you can really see the difference. So that's kind of a really very clear way of showing what, if you want to keep colors together when you're plying, chain plying is a great way to do it. Um, my tips, I have a little video because somebody mentioned that I think when I was in my Patreon, I told them that I had sold the spinner and they're like, but the music, what are we going to do without the music <laughs> where I would have the spinner running? So I did a video of me chain flying and there might be one more video of me um, spinning and I'm going to put the music to that. So you still get some music and it's a great video. I've had a great response. I put it up on, I think, Instagram and people really responded to it well because the angle, you could really see what my arms were doing when I chain ply. Um, my biggest tips. I did a workshop on Patreon for my Patreon people kind of, I do plan to do a mini course that you'll be able to get online, but I wanted to do a kind of test run on just wrapping my head around how I want to teach it. Um, so if you join my Patreon community, which there's a link in the, by, in the show note or yeah, in the show notes, there's a link. Um, there is that workshop sitting in there. So you can always find that if you want to, jump on in and learn a little bit more about chain plying. But my top tips, rest your bobbins. 
So spin your single, you only need one, spin your single, rest your bobbin at least overnight so that the wool settles a little bit because, because of the way you are plying and pulling it off the bobbin, the less you have to fight the spring back on that yarn. So, you know, when you pull it, it kind of wants to, it wants to spin back on itself. The less you have to deal with that, the better. So the first two tips are rest your bobbin overnight. And if you have a tension lazy Kate, it's going to make it a million times easier. Um, start with smaller loops. So you'll see in the video how I'm basically, you're going to do basically doing a crochet chain over and over and over again. Start with small loops so that you're not like trying to control this giant loop of stuff. And then also, this is the one time I think I probably do treadle a little bit slower. I have just enough, you want enough uptake that the wheel's taking the yarn from you as you're applying, but you don't want it too fast because when you're first learning, you're gonna get very overplied yarn. You're probably gonna get overplied yarn anyway, but if you can just slow down your treadling a little bit, slow down the uptake so it's enough but not too much, that's gonna help everything. Um, and just settle in. It takes practice. You gotta settle in. When you're first starting, I say go to the bathroom first so that you don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't get up. Um, you can get up. I show it in the workshop. You can get up, but when you first start, it seems a little overwhelming to walk away from. So anyway, some tips for chain plying. I have a little video. Um, maybe we'll pop to that. Why don't we pop to that so you can see that right away. I'll show you the mill videos and then I'll come back, share a few last things of what I'm or I'll show you what I showed you in the video that I'm working on at the mill, and then I'll say goodbye, because this is already getting too long. Okay, I, I knew I had so much stuff to show you. Okay, see you in a minute. haven't been filming anything from the picker but we're here and it's a warm ish day it was actually really cool overnight last night uh, I'm gonna show you what I try to close up here we'll see if you can kind of see Whoop. so this is our Shetland Roland he's pretty he's a lot whiter than he actually looks when you look at him and now that I'm into his fiber um, there's a lot of white and then there's bits of gray. So it's going to have a tiny bit of gray throughout it. It's pretty spectacular. Let me find a, it kind of varies from, so you've got, and this is typical Shetland to vary. Um, so we've got, I'm going to make sure you guys can see this longer with less crimp, but still so much luster. And then we've got this one that has those tiny baby crimps in it. Um, it's really beautiful. This is his yearling fleece. So at one year, his shearing. Um, obviously this won't happen again. So it's pretty spectacular. I don't honestly remember working with his, his lamb fleeces, which makes me wonder. Some of them I have not gotten to. Um, so but they're being safely stored, so I can get to them. Anyway, the weather, so it is only about 45% humidity in here, which is dry. 
in terms of humidity and dryness. That would be considered dry. I was having a lot of issues last week. You can see how long and beautiful. Really gorgeous, really gorgeous. Our fleeces this year were spectacular. Um, thank you, sheepies. Uh, and husband for keeping our irrigation going. So they had beautiful food to eat all year. And to me for all the things I do for them, right? Uh, mostly to them. Anyway, the humidity, I was having issues with it last week. And this is a great example of the fiber matters. Um, not that the fiber quality wasn't good I was working with last week, but it didn't separate as well. By that, I mean like literally when it pulls apart, like this just separates so well versus kind of getting caught up on each other, all the fibers. The more the fibers kind of interact with each other, the more static can create pretty instantly. So this fiber, and yesterday I picked some other of our Shetland, uh, and it was the same. It just, whew, it beautifully opened up. I wasn't getting static in the picker, so then I'm totally comfortable picking. If I can see static building up in the picker, I don't like it. Um, and either I will stop, depending on the fiber, because it can break the fibers if it's too staticky. Um, either I'll stop or I'll start conditioning it as soon as it gets into the um, collection bin or shower as we call it. So let me come in for you here. Really beautiful fiber. There's our teeth working. And then when we walk over here and I'm gonna, as soon as I finish this, I'll turn the light off. But when I was having a lot of static issues, the fiber would be completely up the sides, like stuck to the sides of the um, inside of the shower. And you can see they're pretty nicely just floating around. Most of it's going down really well. That is what I like to see. So this is a good fiber to be processing right now. Okay, see you in a minute. All right, at the Carter with more Shetland. So this is Andy. I'm not convinced that there's not some Johnny Rose in here, but I did have Johnny Rose's name marked off specifically off the bag as if this was just Andy, but 50-50. Um, Andy is this beautiful Moric color and Johnny may be a little bit lighter. At any rate, it's beautiful. It's going to be next to skin. It's a light Moric, um, which is that really light brown color. It's really, oh, it's one of my favorites and I know it's lots of your favorites as well he does not last long when his fiber comes through and johnny rose is just a mini me version of him and his fiber i'm going to turn the light on here so we can potentially see there we go and i saved the best part here for you all to be able to see the fiber coming out so let's hope that i nailed this well Oop, i did not you can see how the roving kind of got stuck. It came through the roving deck there, but then it got stuck. There just wasn't quite enough of it. So I am going to get this set up and we'll try again. Since I'm here redoing this, you all can watch if I can do this. So I am just feeding this little wire through and it goes all through the roving deck and comes out, hopefully, the other side and then I connect the fiber to this little tiny piece of wire and that is how I feed so I'll grab the fiber from here and then as it's coming off and then I will feed it on there's a little hook on there and I'll feed it onto there and then hopefully we get fiber through the roving deck we'll see Okay, let's try again. I think I need to make a little adjustment to the end of my hook here. There we go. Here she comes. So, uh, you can see how lovely this is. It's got a really light moric color. It's kind of like an oatmeal color. That's what I think of it as. I have knitted quite a few things out of uh, Andy's fiber, sometimes blended with alpaca, sometimes not. So. I'm going to put this into bumps and uh, get it going. 
Okay, I hope that was fun. I hope that was enough spinning <laughs> to keep you all happy. I hope I don't lose all my yarny people out there that are watching. I think a lot of you are spinners anyway, but um, you know, I'm slowly trying to work those of you that aren't into the spinning world. I am planning to do a drop spindle uh, online course soon. So you'll see me working with drop spindles quite a bit over the next little bit. And um, I'm excited to do it though, because I know it is sort of a, more of a little gateway, less expensive way to get in and see if you like it. Now for some people, they try drop spindle and they're like, I can't even stand this. And that's not necessarily what hand spinning on a wheel is. But for those of you that don't wanna put a lot of money out or can't put a lot of money out right now on this craft, drop spindling is a great way to get in it. So watch for that. Okay, before I go, let me show you. You probably saw very, at the time of this filming, there is one, and I didn't show this, but this is Roland. You can see the luster coming off of that. This is Roland's yearling fleece. So he has got a pretty white fleece, but there are some gray fibers through it for sure. Um, the luster is obviously stunning and it will be next to skin as long as you don't overspin it because um, it's his yearling fleece. So it's still pretty soft. There is also one bump of jewelry left. And I think I showed her in a couple episodes ago, but she's a little bit more on the downy side. She doesn't have that same luster. Um, and we can put them side by side. She doesn't have that same luster, but I have knit a ton of things out of her fiber and I really love the downy effect of it. And it still, I think is next to skin. Um, final color at the moment is Andy. And I think there may be some Johnny Rose in here. It would be his yearling fleece if he is in here, but I have a feeling he got snuck in here too. So Andy is, they are both like light fawn colored. So you'll get like a light fawn color when you spin this or oatmeal. Andy's is kind of an all time favorite. It does not, there's a few of these left. So jump on there. And then I haven't actually carded it cause I'm filming today. I'm carding it tomorrow, but I picked out and you will see it in the video, Dolly, no, not Dolly. What am I saying? Uh, Moira Rose and Cuddlebug. So Moira Rose is yearling fleece with Cuddlebug Pygora. I think it's 20%. Uh, there's not going to be a ton of it, but it's in there. So jump over and grab some whatever's left. Um, that's all the fibers. Do you want to see all the Shetlands? Sorry, my lighting's not very good because I'll get too hot. But there's some of the some of those. Okay. Those are in the online shop. They're all going to be lovely to spin. They're all going to be, I'd say next to skin to wear. Okay. Um, last things. Okay. I'm going to try to say this one more time, y'all, cause this is like my third take on this section, but my nurtured sweater. So I was mentioning in the last episode about how I was having, because it's dark and I'm like, having to look as I go each round, you're doing something a little bit different as far as the decreases when you get up to the yoke on this. And I was like, oh my gosh, with the dark, it's really hard for me to figure. So you all, instead of like having to go back and like, which, what did I do last time? Did I decrease here? Did I not? We have these new stitch markers in the shop. Do you see? They have numbers on them. Oh my gosh, Kim, so genius. So I just am using the stitch marker. It's my, so I know where my beginning of the row is. And I'm just basically switching between one and four. So I know row one, I am doing pattern. Row two, I am doing the decrease row where I'm only doing two on each side. Row three, row four is where I'm doing the four decreases. You all, sometimes the simplest things are, you know, anyway. Here they are, and you just go through and you know you slip each row. You can slip the number as your stitch marker. And she also has um, a little extra thing here. So if you're doing it a bazillion times, you could switch to like, you could switch this along to your two, three, four, so you know you can count 20 rows, 30 rows, anyway. I have them available in the online shop. <laughs> if that will help you too, I am just so bad at having the little stitch counter and click, 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 clicking, but I'm like, oh, if it's right here on it, I will use it. So um, they're in the online shop if you need one. 
Okay, you all, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm gonna share this time. I think we've covered enough. I hope you enjoyed all the videos and all the things I had to say, I suppose. Please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to comment, to put the notifications on so that it tells you when I have a new episode out, all of those things. I so appreciate it. It does help YouTube or where you're listening know that you are enjoying what I do. So until next time, make so many pretty things, be kind, be kind, and stay healthy, of course. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you soon and take care.